welcome. My name is Nick Frymuth, and we're here for a very exciting day. The launch of the new string quartet, which will remain anonymous for just a few more minutes, uh, will come from Jim Birkenstock in just a few. We've had the opportunity to get to know this young string quartet, professional, inquisitive, intelligent. These are young people that we want to attract to this community, and we're so thankful that we have found this yet-to-be-named string quartet. And Jim, your vision for Midsummer's music, I think has exponentially grown every year and every season that you come back here. This is a new part of the vision that you started many years ago, and I'm going to introduce Jim Birkenstock in just a few minutes, and we're going to get a chance to hear from the quartet. As a press conference today, though, uh, we'd like your questions, so please be ready if you have questions for our players, for the founder, uh, or for the assistant artistic director, Allison Fleck, will do that as well. We've got a lot to get to today, so first, if you would please welcome Mr. Jim Birkenstock, founder and CEO. Thank you. Yeah, let me get we should <laughs> bring that down a little bit. I think my growing days are over. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you for coming. Um, uh, very special day. The finally, uh, after several months of quartet activity, uh, we we get to to give them a name today. Uh, 340 years ago, over on a river off of Lake Erie, the French explorer La Salle and his group of fellow explorers were building a ship. And it turned out to be, we believe, the first uh, sailing vessel, as we think of it, something apart from the canoes that the, that the native um, people used, but a, a, a real sailing vessel, someplace between 40 and 60 tons, we, we think, was being built. And ultimately, rather hastily, was, was launched because, the, as they say, the Indians were getting restless and the, they were, the La Salle was worried about this. Anyway, they launched into uh, Lake Erie, made their way uh, through Lake Huron, um, up around Sault Ste. Marie and down, and we believe that it uh, came to either Washington Island or Rock Island. And uh, from there, it, it loaded uh, a bunch of furs that was waiting for it, and then set off again and disappeared. And I think it's terribly fitting that the new exhibit here at the Maritime uh, uh, is called uh, Shipwrecks of, of Door County because the, the ship named Le Griffon, uh, we call it the Griffin, uh, was perhaps the first uh, ship that went down leading to this whole uh, evolution of, of, of shipping and shipwrecks that, that is commemorated in the exhibit here. The problem is that the uh, Griffon was never found and it, there's a great deal of lore and history and uh, people looking for it, expeditions uh, near Escanaba or over in uh, Lake Huron around Manitoulin Island. There have been different uh, explorers trying to find this and thinking they found the location, but so far we don't know definitively where, where it went down. So it still intrigues us today. Very exciting, a um, lot of history involved, and uh, all of the trappings of a, a uh, a sailing vessel on, on the Great Lakes. So, w as we were looking for a, a name for the group, we, we explored many, many, many different names. <laughs> we, we had meetings and we asked audience members for their input, and finally, the, the name that we came up with and the name that the quartet really liked was the Griffin. So, <coughs> Today, you might say we are launching the Griffin again, and it's going to be 
going out through the communities of northeastern Wisconsin, exploring, bringing ex the same excitement that we associate with, with that ship, uh, perhaps some mystery, um, <clears throat> but it's, it's a, an exciting venture because it's the, the string quartet is so intimately a part of our culture. It's, it's hard to conceive of a body of music that's more important than the, the music written for strings. And it, we all know that it's the main part of a symphony orchestra. So it's, it's particularly important, I think, that we try to establish a strong string presence here in northeastern Wisconsin. I, I think it's safe to say that we have some excellent programs here and there, but not on a, a wide scale. And that's something that we are very much interested in accomplishing. And this, this wonderful group is the beginning of that effort. So they're going to be teaching uh, youngsters to play. They're going to be playing themselves, demonstrating what uh, wonderful music I is available this way. And they're going to be doing that in all kinds of different uh, uh, venues. We just had, uh, during the holiday uh, period, we had them going around, uh, popping up here and there, uh, playing sort of little surprise caroling uh, appearances. They were in banks or uh, restaurants, uh, all kinds of places, just showing up uh, playing for a few minutes. It was very exciting. Then we had two uh, wonderful holiday concerts, one at Hope Church here in Sturgeon Bay and one at the new Crest Pavilion in Egg Harbor. Sold out, uh, just standing room only, literally, at, at the Crest. We didn't even have standing room by, by the time the concert started. It was, it was so packed. Um, so. We, we're having a great response to this group, and we're just getting started. We're really just getting started. We, um, two days ago, they began a, a teaching program at uh, the YMCA, one of our partners and collaborators. We're also working with um, <coughs> Boys and Girls Club in the Green Bay area. We're partnering with the Fine Arts Institute at East High School, uh, where we're complementing that program. and. Just yesterday, we were meeting uh, with uh, some leaders at St. Norbert's, and they're going to be uh, initiating a program there as St. Norbert's develops a string program in their music department. So they are really spreading out and uh, bringing together many aspects of the cultural community here in northeastern Wisconsin, Door County, Brown County, and maybe beyond. Um, so we're, we're, we're very excited about this, and one of the things we're particularly excited about is the group that we have that you're going to hear in just a second. Um, because when, when we first conceived of this idea, you know, you think of something kind of in, an, in the abstract, but now we have the reality, and I have to say the reality is even beyond our, our wildest dreams and hopes. So we're, we're delighted that we have four such wonderful players, it is, but it isn't just the quality of each one of them which is spectacular. These are uh, fine world-class uh, professionals, uh, all of them have advanced degrees, and They've played many of them all over the world, but now we have them here in, in, in Door County and Brown County. But it's not just the individuals, it's the synergy that comes when you put four right people together and the sum is greater than the, the, than the parts. That's, that's the thing that's so particularly exciting. So um, having heard enough from me, I think it's time that we hear a little bit of music from, I get to say for the first time, the Griffin String Quartet. Thank you. 
young people are and you're seeing a switch right now that I'm going to talk about before we introduce each of them. Switching the first and second violin is very rare. It doesn't happen often in the string quartet so as they introduce themselves I would like them to address that. Uh, it, unique to say the very least. So we're going to start with Blakely Mangini tonight. Uh, she's going to be our first guest to the podium and since this is a press conference uh, a little bit later after our second piece we will allow an, uh, an opportunity to ask a question. So Blakely come on up and if you would each of you when you get the opportunity we'll go one by one. Please Please tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how you got connected with Midsummer's music, please. Hi everyone, um, I'm Blakely Mangini and I play the viola in the Griffin String Quartet. We can finally tell <laughs> everybody our name. Um, I'm originally from Northern Illinois, about two and a half hours west of Chicago in the cornfields. Um, I met Vinny Santana, who you'll meet in a little while at UW-Madison where I just finished my DMA um, in May, so finally done with school, so that's always great. Um, and there I was playing with a scholarship quartet which got connected with Midsummer's music and that sort of led us to today where we're a new group with two new members. Um, what else do you need to know about me? It's been great. <laughs> it's a dream job. It really is. Okay. You were alluded to, which you might yeah. be our second. Hello, everybody. My name is Vinicius Santana, but you all can call me Vinny. I am originally from Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and like Blakely, um, I mean, we got in co connected with Midsummers um, last year. Um, I was finishing my master's. That's how we end up um, here. Uh, you wanted to know a little bit more about wh how, why uh, Ryan and I would switch. I think as violinists, it's, it's just a great opportunity to be exposed to both uh, parts. Uh, it's, it's, it's just such, such a different feeling, such different jobs, and us having the possibility of switching allows us to experience both, um, you know, both parts. Hi, my name is Roy Meyer. I'm originally uh, from just west of Stevens Point, Wisconsin, so I'm a, a local yokel. Um, <laughs> I did my undergrad at University of Wisconsin with uh, David Perry, uh, who Midsummers knows quite well. Um, from there, I did a, a master's in Florida and um, some extended study at NYU, and uh, eventually made my way back to Chicago, um, where I'm based half-time now, uh, half-time here. And <clears throat> I can remember uh, getting the first uh, message from Sally Chisholm about the possibility of being in a new quartet that was starting. And then shortly thereafter, um, was contacted by both Blakely and Vinny um, when I was doing a concert in, in um, New York, upstate. And I remember thinking I had a really good friend who was a cellist and a really good friend who was a violist. And, uh, wasn't sure I wanted <laughs> to <laughs> meet new people, <laughs> um, but it's 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 been uh, amazing actually. Um, and to address the, uh, the switching, um, I think it's actually I I wasn't uh, one hundred percent taken with the idea at first because um, I thought well we need to all adjust to the the, the the leader's sound or something and. 
the fact is, no matter who the, it was leading the group, the, the sound needs to be unified. It needs to be uh, four. So I think um, switching and, and being able to adjust only, only makes us better musicians and artists. Thank you. Ryan on the cello. Hi, my name is Ryan Louie. I'm originally from Queens, New York. It's my first year in Wisconsin, actually. But I, I slowly have been moving out west. Um, lived in Pittsburgh, most recently lived six years in Cleveland. And um, I met Vinny a couple summers ago. We played at a music festival together. And the cellist that was playing in Vinny and Blakely's group was one of my closest friends. And he um, couldn't go further with the quartet because he moved to Chicago. And um, he asked me if I wanted to audition. I was, I was like, sure. I love chamber music, always have loved chamber music. There wasn't much chamber music in my life at the time, um, which was a shame, but it's, it led me to this and um, couldn't be any happier. And playing with these guys has been awesome. Welcome. It's great to have you here. Blakely, if you wouldn't mind one more time just addressing us uh, with the first piece you performed and a preview of the next. Sure. Please. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of numbers to keep track of. So the per first piece that we played was the um, Hoffmeister String Quartet by Mozart, uh, written as sort of a dedication to his friend, a publisher named Hoffmeister. Um, and the next piece we're playing is, what is the opus number? 20, number two, 20. A Haydn String Quartet, opus 20, number two. Um, and this movement is a fugue all throughout. So what a fugue means is that you'll hear someone make a statement, and you'll, then you'll hear someone else make that same statement. Someone else will make the same statement. Someone else will make the same statement. And we're all sort of talking over each other, but it makes really great layering. So be listening for the layering in this fugue. Thank you. 
members at Midsummer's Music made a, a statement last summer. We were doing a live broadcast, and it was in Ephraim, I believe, and it was the comment uh, by one of your board members that this is no longer musty, dusty chamber music. Midsummer's music has <laughs> elevated chamber and classical music. I mean, did you not have fun just watching them? The listening was, was amazing, right? But they have fun with what they do. And I'm so proud to introduce you to the community here today with Sebastopol TV and some great fine media outlets. You are going to be everywhere. You've already been. I don't know if you noticed, but on Facebook Live, you did a great job. Thank you. The Maritime Museum had them right away. Jim Olson Motors had it right away. You were in so many different locations. You've already taken Door County by storm virally, and now the word is getting out not only that they're great performers, but they're great individuals, and their passion for youth is what I'd like to talk about next. And I'm going to welcome Jim back up for this as we open up some question and answer uh, to the entire audience here today. But you're going to be partnering with the YMCA, and that's a big one. The only organized string lesson or lessons offered in the whole county. Kind of sad, but I'm so glad you're filling that void. Well, there have been um, other string programs in the past, but, but they've sort of come and gone, unfortunately. And so our intent is to uh, g get a, a, a strong string program going again uh, and to keep it going because it, like I said before, uh, strings are fundamental to a music program. It, uh, we, we have choral programs uh, in the area. We have good wind programs. This is just meant to complement that. It's not competing with it. It's just filling in the picture and uh, solidifying the whole musical uh, opportunity scene uh, throughout, throughout the area. Um, and in these uh, classes, group and private instruction uh, th uh, through the Y is, is just the first step uh, in, in doing that. But right now we have six week sessions. Uh, we just started one, uh, a small group of really interested young kids that, that experienced Monday night just what you saw here and they are so enthused. And uh, then in six weeks, uh, another class will be starting. Uh, and we expect that to just grow exponentially. Uh, we, same thing in, in uh, Brown County. I mentioned uh, uh, what we were talking about with uh, uh, St. Norbert. Um, we're going to have a, a, a string day in uh, April, I believe it is bringing string players in from all around. These are players that have already started, but giving them an opportunity to see where that can go, to, to get an idea of how they can jumpstart playing maybe to a higher level. And that, that's going to be really exciting. We, we, we don't know whether we're going to have 15 at that or 115, but it's, it's the beginning, and we will build as we will in this whole program. But they're also going to be working in the classroom with Fine Arts uh, uh, Institute, uh, starting with East High in Green Bay, but now that's uh, spreading down into the lower grades, and they're going to be working in some of these classrooms, showing how music can uh, coexist or, or complement subject matter in, in some of these classrooms. So science or history or literature, they're, they're going to be doing individual programs in the classroom so that students who aren't uh, musicians, per se, can also get a feeling for the relevancy of music and, and how powerful it can be in their lives. So, and, and then to other levels of uh, ages and so forth, all the way up to, to seniors. Uh, even uh, we're, we're starting a program called B Double Sharp, which is for uh, memory units in uh, various uh, places around, like Scan and Sister Bay and, and, and so forth. Um, we, we know that music is something that goes deep into the brain and even those that have memory challenges, they still can connect with music in a very important way. It's, 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 it, it's 
it's really something that we need to do, we have to do, but there's a, me there's a lesson there and there's a message there because that depth that music goes to starts right in infancy. Before any of us could speak or knew one word, we already were understanding music. The, the, you, we know what we, ca what we call baby talk, which is really parent talk, you know, to the babies, but it's very exaggerated musically. That's something that little babies understand right away. They, they understand music before they understand language. So it's that fundamental, it's that intuitive, and we, we just need to keep that connection going throughout life. One more thing, you can tell I'm passionate about this, but uh, there's a lot of research going on right now about how the brain deals with music. And one thing that we know is that when we're really young, we have all these connections or potential connections in our brain, way more than we'll ever need, ultimately. And if we don't use those, they just kind of disappear by the time we're 12 years old. But if you play a musical instrument or are deeply involved in music before that time, many of those passages, pathways that would be otherwise lost uh, are, are maintained and can be used for a, a, a multitude of purposes. So these guys all have a lot of passages <laughs> that many other people don't have. Now, how they use them, that's another matter. <laughs> you know, I, I can't vouch for that, but uh, it, it's important. In fact, I want to just, um, sorry, Nick, but I want to, in, in, in something we put together here, we, we quote um, something that Einstein said. You know, Einstein played the violin, and he was quoted as saying at one point, if I were not a physicist, I would probably be, be a musician. I often think in music. I live my daydreams in music. I see my life in terms of music. It got me to thinking, wouldn't it be really fantastic if we could give all of our kids something of that opportunity to think like Einstein? That's what we're all about. Uh, and if you use the podium, I appreciate it. So, we'll go back to or, oh. Oh, so okay. at the YMCA, we're working with ages 8 through 13. So, oh, before that 12 year old, you know, yeah. synapse <laughs> disappearance. Do you have a, a music uh, partnership? Was it with Hyde Music that they can get an instrument if they don't have one yet? Yeah, so they're renting instruments through Hyde Music. I believe they can purchase them as well, but, you know, with the youngsters, they're more interested in renting since they're growing. How many do you have in your first? Set? We have four right now, um, two sets of siblings, which is kind of fun. Um, so we're hoping when six weeks rolls around, they'll have told their friends and we'll get some more. String instruments, plural, you're not focusing on one? They actually, we didn't know what they would bring and they all brought violins. So it's ah. turning into a violin class, <laughs> um, but it's open to cello and viola as well. And Nick, uh, some people don't know this, but um, for the younger uh, kids, they have instruments that are sized, uh, so they have like half size, even quarter size uh, violins, for instance. So they they don't have to play, you know. I'll have to ask about funding. This doesn't uh, do it on its own. Word. And how are you getting funding for this? Great question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, we obviously we're looking for funding. Our 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 budget. We we set this out initially as a three-year project. I mean, we, we intend for it to go on, but uh, uh, indefinitely. But we, we rather than start it out year by year, we thought it best to have it be a three-year uh, project, and that. Uh, uh, that means a budget of uh, 
close to a half million dollars for the three years. So 150 plus per year. Um, like everything else, our funding is ramping up. Uh, we're, we're making contacts uh, practically as we, in fact, consider this a contact. <laughs> we, we, we need your support. Um, but uh, we, we have applications out to a number of foundations. We have a n number of private individuals that have already stepped up. Uh, one of the uh, most fun uh, contributions that we got recently was from the Green Bay Packer Foundation. Uh, they, I, I was not aware of how much they do all over the state, but they are uh, a significant contributor to, to this project, uh, and we're, we're searching out for, for more like that. But we have a sub substantial amount we have to raise. Some of it will be coming from income, uh, some money from students and the, w the work we're doing in uh, various places and from concerts, but that's a very small amount because we want this to be very accessible uh, price-wise. Uh, many of the concerts that they're giving are for free will donations, so not even a, 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 a ticket price. But when people turn out the way they do at the, did at the uh, holiday concert, that, that amounts to something, and all of that goes into the, uh, um, to the, the whole project. Midsummer's Music is providing a lot of, of the leadership and the, the support uh, just from a, uh, an administrative standpoint and, and uh, marketing and so forth. But uh, other than that, contributions are very important. Maybe the Packers are getting ready for the uh, Packers Bears game, halftime entertainment. Sam Perlman is saying Bears. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're working with kids. You're going into the classrooms. Roy, would you mind telling us a little bit about what it's like working with very young, soon to be musicians? Um. This is really exciting, and it, it always takes me back to when I was a kid and how excited I was to get my first instrument uh, when I was about four and three quarters, uh, started in the fall. And it's, I, I was sitting next to a, an eight-year-old boy in the, in the YMCA class, and to, to see how excited he was getting and to just be there um, for him like other teachers were for me is, is really exciting. It's a special connection that uh, I don't know where else it exists. Can you talk a little bit more about what you're doing in Sebastopol classrooms? Or if you're going to schools and have gone to schools, right? It's not just the lessons at the Y, right? Uh, no, it's it's also playing at we, uh, Gibraltar yeah. and uh, other schools, and we've we've given performances and and the boys and girls, of course. And actually, that one was more special to me, guys. I think, especially um, who aren't so often. Uh, it's it's only the privileged who can access these kinds of things and for us to be able to play for those who aren't you know extraordinarily wealthy or something is is uh, very special I mean, hopefully as many as possible. Um, in the area where I grew up, there were a lot of youth orchestra programs, and there weren't a lot of chamber music programs. And I think it'd be awesome for us to start a youth chamber music program where kids are playing with each other. And beyond just you know learning the private lesson, learning how to play their own instruments, it's, the, it's chamber music's the most fun thing. Like you're, you're like a little team, you get to solve Mozart or Haydn or try to solve them and like try to put it all together and I think it'd be so cool if we had you know many different little chamber groups quartets piano trios string quintets and of all different ages and them just working together and putting together all this great music 
it's also really nice to be exposed to this music early and to have some kind of connection with it. I, I, I know from personal experience, um, I didn't always like the cello. It was, I just picked it because my public school required me to play an instrument, but I played piano before and I loved classical music. So I had this um, passion for it and I just really, really deep appreciation for it. And then one day it just all clicked and I was like, whoa, cello's like awesome. And <laughs> it led me here and I'm, I hope once we start these programs and more kids come, that'll lead to their future being similar and something like that. Nick, um, Ryan said something that, that I, I just wanted to follow up on and when, when he talked about uh, young people playing chamber music. There, because it, there's something special that happens when you play chamber music that um, is apart from the music. They're, 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 you know, we, we often talk about uh, how playing sports is is good because you learn teamwork and, and that kind of thing. Well, the same thing happens maybe even to a greater degree playing chamber music because if you, as you notice, there's no conductor here. Uh, so uh, not only in performance uh, are they working as a unit, but think about the rehearsal when you first sit down with a piece that let's say nobody knows and you're you're, you're only bringing your part to it, and you have to figure out how that relates to three other parts. And who's the most important at one point or another? And how you can uh, make your part blend or support another. So th there, there are lessons there in teamwork, in, in listening to one another. I mean, that's really important, not only musically, but listening to what uh, you know, if somebody says, I'm going to play it a little faster here, and you're accompanying them, you need to go with them, and you need to listen to, to that. Wouldn't it be nice if, if throughout society we all could, could listen like that and, and had that kind of teamwork? Well, there are many lessons like that apart from the music itself, which is a huge lesson, but there are other lessons like that that make, make this so special, and I'm so glad that Ryan mention that because it's a little bit different than playing in an orchestra or a band or something where you have a conductor that's telling you what to do. The other thing is, if you notice, each one of them has their own part. Nobody else is playing their music. So if they don't perform, it doesn't happen. You know, <laughs> if, if, if all of a sudden they decide to just, you know, rest for a little while, then that part is missing and you don't get the, the whole thing. So everybody is extremely important in, in a piece of chamber music like this. Last question. For me, for me at least. Yeah. This is our last chance for a sales pitch. So if you want to see that number of four, go to eight and 16 in your string group lessons. I would love to know why you would recommend it for four and three quarters to whatever age you're going up to. And let's get people more attracted to this. You in our community want to benefit it for that. Definitely. Yeah. It, this question uh, makes me think of how I started to play the violin. I, I was lucky in Brazil that I, I started play. I learned violin in this institute where uh, all the classrooms are big groups of 30 and or 40 kids learning at the same time, double bass, cello, viola everybody together learning how to hold the, the instrument. And I remember that it was so much fun because I had no experience at all of uh, uh, classical music. My parents are uh, not um, musicians at all. And, and uh, getting ex exposed to all, all of this uh, type of music and having my friends around, it, it made everything so much fun and such much more exciting for me. And I, I got engaged right away. And I, I do believe that if I didn't start in that exact program with, you know, friends around me, and I'm not sure if I will actually be where I am right now. I, I think it really pushed me and inspired me being surrounded by uh, friends and, and, you know, everything. So, so much fun, and much better. And having um, friends 
uh, with you while you're learning uh, those instruments really, really makes a difference. I, I do believe that uh, the program that we are, we are doing here has a lot of potential and kids will have tons of fun while learning a beautiful instrument. questions at this time. I, I want to tell you mm -hmm. a, a very quick story <laughs> about, about Vinny, uh, about when he started. I, I know something that he didn't tell, and that is um, a few years ago when I was playing at, at, at Lyric Opera in Chicago, we got a new French horn player in the orchestra, fourth, fourth horn player, and he sat very close to me, and we got to talking, and I, I found out that he was from Brazil, and he's from Sao Paulo, the same city that uh, Vinny's from. So um, then I, I retired from, from Lyric, and right away we had the Hunt Quartet come and play for, for Midsummer's Music, and, and I met Vinny, and I found out that he was from Sao Paulo. So I told him about this, this um, horn player that... Uh, had just joined the, the Lyric Orchestra, and I g had the opportunity to play with him for one year, and we, we got to be friends and so forth. And right away, he said, Samuel. And I said, what? He said, Samuel. That was his first name. <laughs> he knew already. So, okay, he, he knows, he knows um, uh, that there's a Brazilian musician that got in the orchestra in Chicago. But then he goes on to tell me, he said, I, I said, do you, do you know him? He said, well, he lived in the same apartment building in, in Sao Paulo that Vinny did. <laughs> now, Sao Paulo is, what, 20 million people, something like that? I mean, it, it makes Chicago look like, you know, a little burg. And <laughs> here, these two were living in the same apartment. Now, Samuel is quite a bit older than Vinny. Vinny remembers hearing Samuel play the French horn. How many floors away? Ten floors? At least ten. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> but he, he could hear the French horn, and, and Vinny was attracted to that, and he started pestering Samuel, and Samuel realized that there maybe was some talent here and insisted that Vinny get in the string program. Wow. So isn't it a small world? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, and we're truly blessed to have you four in our community engaged, teaching our youth. I can't wait. I've got a five and a seven-year-old. I can't wait. <laughs> You're going to be working with them soon. Uh, I hope that we maybe have plans in the future to possibly move it further south as well, but we have people from Algoma and Luxembourg already showing interest in traveling to Fish Creek for these lessons. So right now, it's a northern door offering at the YMCA there, and who knows? The sky is the limit with this group, as you're probably already finding out. And branching out to other school districts or other communities like here in Sturgeon Bay. We're really looking forward to tracking your success. We know you are going to be successful and truly grateful to have you here today. Thank you to all of our guests as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.